In this video, we look at factorising trinomials where the leading coefficient a is no longer 1. So what do we do if the coefficient of x squared in our quadratic or trinomial is not equal to 1? Well, if the coefficient is a common factor of each term in the trinomial or the quadratic, then we can just factorise it out. So for example, 3x squared minus 21x plus 30 has a common factor of 3 in each term. So we can pull that out and write it as 3x squared minus 7x plus 10, and then go ahead and factorise x squared minus 7x plus 10, which does have a leading coefficient of 1 in the usual way, to obtain x minus 2, x minus 5. Remembering that we have the common factor of 3, we simply place that out the front. So 3x squared minus 21x plus 30, common factor of 3, and then factored trinomial of x minus 2, x minus 5. But what if that's not the case? What we're going to do in the rest of this video is look at a method for dealing with such trinomials. So the idea is like this. It's kind of like the previous method, but a little bit more involved. The first thing we do is calculate the product of a and c and take its absolute value. Then we write down all the possible pairs of factors of that number. Once we've done that, we have to figure out if c is positive or not. If c is positive, we select the factor pair from part 2, which adds up to give the absolute value of b. And we call those factors f1 and f2 and give them the same signs as b. If c is negative though, we select the factor pair which differs by the absolute value of b. Call them f1 and f2 and give them opposite signs. Specifically, the larger of the two should have the same sign as b. Then, we write our quadratic or trinomial as ax squared plus the first factor times x plus the second factor times x plus c. And then move on by grouping pieces and then finally factoring. Here's some examples. If you feel comfortable with this one already, pause the video and have a go yourself and then come back and check your work. If not, you can just follow through with me now. Okay, so I've copied, copied the method from the previous slide and just pasted it here so we can refer to it. The first thing we want to do is find out the absolute value of a times c. In the first example, that's going to be 3 by 16, which is 48. So a by c, absolute value is 48. Now we want all the factor pairs of that. So we have 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, and 6 and 8. In our trinomial here we've got plus 16 as c. So c is positive and we follow the 3a branch. We select the factor pair which adds to give the absolute value of b, in our case 16. Looking across the factor pairs we find that 4 and 12 is the factor pair that will add to give 16. So we're going to call those f1 and f2 and give them the same sign as b in the quadratic. So f1 is equal to 4, and f2 is equal to 12. Then we move to step 4, and we write our quadratic out again. 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 is going to be equal to 3x squared plus the first factor times x, 4x, plus the second factor, 12 times x, plus c, 16. Now working two terms at a time, we factor out common factors. So in the first two terms we have a common factor of x outside of 3x plus 4. Then in the second two terms we have a common factor of 4 outside of again 3x plus 4. What you should always notice is that common factor appearing in this next line. So we finally pull that out, factor that out 3x plus 4 and then we're left with x and plus 4 from the first and second terms. And there's our fully factorised form of 3x squared plus 16x plus 16. If you didn't try that one out yourself, now that you've seen one, maybe give b a go by yourself first, and then come back and follow me. Okay, so once again, we want the absolute value of a times c. Here that's going to be 4 times 5, which is 20. Factor pairs of 20 then are 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. 
In this example, C is minus 5, which is a negative, so we're going to follow the 3B branch. With a negative, we select the factor pair which differs by the absolute value of B. The absolute value of B is 19, so the factor pair which differs by 19 is 1 and 20. We call those F1 and F2, choosing the larger to have the same size as B, same sign as B. The larger here is 20, so we give that the same sign as B, a negative. F2 equal to 1 will have the opposite sign. Then again, we're going to want to write out our quadratic in this form. So we have 4x squared minus 19x minus 5 is equal to 4x squared minus 20x plus x minus 5. And again, we work through two terms at a time, factoring and grouping. We have a common factor of 4x in the first two terms, so we're left over with x and minus 5. Then we have plus x minus 5. There's nothing we, we could really factor out of these two, but I note that it's the same as this part here. So what I'm going to do is group it up as x minus 5 and put a 1 out the front to indicate that I've got one of those, 1x minus 5. Now I have that common factor that I want, which I can pull out the front, leaving me with 4x from the first term and plus 1 from the second. And that's our factored form for 4x squared minus 19x minus 5. And as usual, you can bust it open again to check that you've got it right. But I think this one's okay. Okay, so in this video, we've seen how to factorise trinomials, quadratics in particular, where the leading coefficient is not 1. Here I've written it as a. We've worked a couple of examples of applying this new method. And what you should be aware of is that there are other examples too, and some of these may make more sense to you and work better for you. So check out some other texts or look online to find out about those.